Hello everyone. As you see, I have my headphones on, of course. They're a little bit dilapidated, but you don't have to worry. They still work. I mean, for what I'm doing, at least. But, um, yeah, we're going to be talking about an article from our friend Screen Rant. So today from Screen Rant, we're going to be talking about the Peacemaker. Yes, the Peacemaker. The Peacemaker director has suggested that he's going to eat some flaming Hot Cheetos while watching his show. Okay, guys, so I just thought it was really catchy that, you know, given that James Gunn has suggested that he's going to eat flaming Hot Cheetos when he's snacking while watching his show debut this week. Now, if you guys aren't aware, Peacemaker is going to be making his debut on HBO Max. All right. Four hours ago, guys. All right. Peacemaker, the writer director we know, James Gunn, has suggested that he's going to be eating Flamin' Hot Cheetos as his snack of choice while he's watching his DC show when it debuts this week on HBO Max. Now, followed by his work on Guardians of the Galaxy, James Gunn has become the go to mastermind of dishing out oddball comic book content. We know the Suicide Squad has unleashed DC characters like Polka Dot Man and King Shark and we know John Cena's character. Now again, we know Peacemaker. Yeah, Peacemaker. So now Peacemaker gets his own sh series on HBO this week. HBO Max. Yes, HBO Max. So Peacemaker is going to get his own show. Yes, so when the audience has saw Peacemaker in the new edition of the Suicide Squad, he is seemingly shot dead by Bloodsport before it's being squashed by collapsing Jodenheim reactors. Now, it's not noted, though. The film's credit scene has revealed Peacemaker did indeed survive the events of Cordo Maltese and the need to help save the fucking world. As Peacemaker said, the eponymous vigilante villain was joined by some others, done by Amanda Waller, of course, and alongside other DC Extended Universe newcomers. We also know those tie in as well. Okay, so a latest article How do you watch Peacemaker online? Well, we're not talking about that. All you really have to know is that it's on HBO Max. So, with Peacemaker, his first three episodes are set to drop this week. They're going to drop on Wednesday. Now, fans have recently tweeted that James Gunn is at a tweet is on a Twitter post saying that what snacks will he have while he watches his series. Again, James Gunn has often engages with his fans from Twitter pages to reply by tweeting a photo of a bag of crunchy flaming hot Cheetos. Yes, so it's no so it doesn't surprise me why he didn't suggest empanadas, but again, Flamin' Hot Cheetos are still very, very good. Check out this tweet he said below. Hashtag Peacemaker. James Gunn tweeted himself. The Cheetos Crunchy Flamin' Hots. Y'all already see he has his little tiny bag right here. The two for $1.59 each. Little bags right here. You can see his tweet on uh, Twitter. Now, any recommendations on snacks I should wa I should eat while watching these three episodes? <laughs> he responded with Flamin' Hot Cheetos. Yes, Flamin' Hot Cheetos. So, if you're hungry for Flamin' Hot Cheetos, you should go to the store and get yourself some. Because that's what James Gunn is going to be having when he watches his show get debuted on Wednesday. Now... Peacemaker was written mostly directed by James Gunn, who's recognized his titular character's potential from this jump as an oxymoronic character. Again, Peacemaker cherishes peace with all of his heart, 
He doesn't care how many men, women, and children he has to kill to get it. Suffers to say, the series is chaotic and riddled with off-wall comedy touch. Peacemaker is set to be a grounded, more grounded than the movie we saw him from Suicide Squad. Again, this may be the perfect vehicle vessel for James Gunn's signature brand of irrelevance. Now, don't think that in the wrong way, though. Think of that in the good way. But it has proven to be a hit. It could mark the beginning of a DC Extended Universe doing a Marvel Cinematic Universe excuse success from streaming. Streaming. Yes, yeah, streaming. So, everybody's doing streaming now. Nobody does DVD. Everyone does streaming. But, hopefully, Peacemaker is like a bag of flaming Hot Cheetos. Yep. The fiery addition to an already successful formula. We know the Suicide Squad didn't do so well in the box office. But, besides that, guys, we know it did well on HBO Max. Now, if you saw the Suicide Squad on HBO Max, then good. If you saw it in box office and HBO Max, then pat yourself on the fucking back. If you've seen Suicide Squad in box office and HBO Max, then you are a real superhero. So pat yourself on the motherfucking back. Yes. So again, we know we have to deliver this character. So Peacemaker aims to be an anti-hero that goes further into stretch on the 13th of January this year, this week. In 2022. Again guys. Um. So. Um. You want to know more about James Gunn. I guess I'll help you guys out. And I'll talk about other ideas. That James Gunn could do. After Suicide Squad. Okay. So other DC villain ideas. That James Gunn could do. After his Suicide Squad. Alright guys, so James Gunn has expressed his own interest of making more movies or shows in what they call the villain verse of DC Extended Universe after the success on HBO Max with The Suicide Squad. Now, now we know that it didn't do so well in the box office, but HBO Max, you know, when they had that on HBO Max, Suicide Squad totally rocked the bombs. They really rocked home because we now have some possibility on what James Gunn might do next. Alright guys, so what DC Extended Universe movie, based from his villains of DC Comics, might interest that of James Gunn to make a follow-up from the Suicide Squad? Okay guys, so the filmmaker has been very famous. And making the most obscure bad guys or rejected ones for a chance to make a Superman reboot in the favors. But then also he wants to continue rock projects like King Shark and Peacemaker. Again, this is begs some questions on whatever projects James Gunn has in mind for her future. Okay guys, so this is all hypothetical. But again, we can just keep going. So, while breaking the film into horror-themed works of trauma entertainment, superheroes and comic books are a major influence upon James Gunn's work, even before he directed Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, we know he's produced independent superhero comedies, the specials. Again, James Gunn has also credited for helping him secure the first big gigs as studio screenwriters, now, later on, he wrote to f direct the film Super. Again, this offered the twist take of what costume vigilantes would live in a real world. Now, fans would also follow James Gunn from his social media like Twitter, and they could attest to his love of superheroes and the knowledge of his classic characters in the comic book universe. Y'all know. So, that love and knowledge is apparent to the Suicide Squad, 
which has boosted the largest collection of DC comic characters in any film to the day, and the first live-action appearances have decidedly obscure supervillains, which is a whole genre of its own. Again, Gunn could easily follow up the fate of the surviving Suicide Squad members with another sequel to the Suicide Squad, but he's already developing a spin-off series centered around Peacemaker. We already know that's already coming out this week. Alright, so every possible DC Extended Universe movie show the Suicide Squad can set up. Now, this is kind of what we're already talking about, unless you want me to talk about that. we we'll just keep going. Alright, so the question remains, what other DC Extended Universe project can James Gunn work on after he completes his obligation to the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3? Again, which was delayed because Marvel had to go rehire him again. Now, director recently confirmed he's indeed developing another DC project. However, is very much some under wraps in early stage of developments. Again, fans shouldn't expect any news about this in DC Fandom 2021. Because answering fan questions on Twitter about the project and what it might be. He's responded with the next adaptation of DC. He's going to tackle won't have anything to do with the Peacemaker. The news that is speculated, again, with the movies or TV series Gunn is working on, isn't even related to Suicide Squad. Though, he is working on some other projects or spin-offs to the films, but what is actually will be anyone's guess in the moment. With all this in mind, guys, here's a list of projects and characters that Gunn might be making into a film or a show. There are so many options in the universe, so the director has some many, many eyes on some underrated characters, and there's a lot of potential for some of them. Okay. First on the list, we got The Secret Six. Okay. Spinning off of the 2005 Infinite Crisis event, The Secret Six is centered around a found family of six mercenary supervillains. Now, this is twisted to be heroes yet of moral to be counted amongst the ranks of the secret society of supervillains. These six villains walk the razor edge across the seed size of the DC Universe. They've retained the name Secret Six even after their ranks swell to even more than six members. The team membership include the number of familiar villains, we know, like Bane, the Mad Hatter, Catman, and often portrayed Deadshot. Now, also introduce memorable villains as well, the super contortionist we know as Ragdoll. Now, it's even more twisted than his body. The Banshee, we know Jeanette, and Vandal Savage's daughter, the Scandal Savage. Alright, so Secret Six was something of a spiritual successor to the original Suicide Squad from the comics that were inspired by the Suicide Squad. Now, it would be easy to see him building a team around the Bloodsport and Ratcatcher 2 and the other villains who've survived the events from Suicide Squad. But again, the Secret Six movie is an, another possibility for what's happened to Will Smith Deadshot during those events of Suicide Squad. Additional to this, the Secret Six movie might also provide God with another chance to work with Dave Bautista. Again, he wants to have a role in Suicide Squad, the actor himself has even expressed playing the interest of Bane in the DC Extended Universe, believe it or not. So this would be a really, he would be a really good pick for a more comedic yet paternal version of Bane than that we've seen Gil Simon wrote for The Secret Six. Okay. Next on the list is of ideas is Harley and Ivy. Alright, now, I know I kind of talked about this 
if you subscribe or sort of remember. Now, if you don't, that's fine. I'm going to remind you again. So, many comic book fans have been clamoring to the bits for Poison Ivy to be introduced to the DC Extended Universe ever since the Harley Quinn introduction. Now, Chiefs among them is saying that actress Margaret Robbie has said their relationship between Harley and Ivy is one of the best aspects of the comics. Again, she's been pestering people from Warner Brothers about bringing Pamela Isley into the DC Extended Universe. Also, this adds, I'm very keen to see Harley post Harley and Poison Ivy relationships on the screen. Again, Harley and Poison Ivy relationship. That's what they want to see. Again, it'd be fun. Again, very fun. But presuming that Robbie is still down to the clown, the suit up as Harley Quinn again, James Gunn has to be an ideal candidate for tackling this test, introducing Poison Ivy in the universe. Now, we have to establish a romance between these two heroines as all of its complicated glory. Now, Robbie's very attached to her character as Harley Quinn, so it would seem very likely she'd be all game to return to reprise her role in the future. Again, whatever this project is going to be. Okay. Mm. So, the latest article. What's next for Harley Quinn in DC Extended Universe? Future Explained. Now, if you want me to talk about that, I'll talk about it. But let's keep going. Deadshot. Okay, Deadshot. Okay, the only thing preventing Deadshot, Will Smith, to return to the Suicide Squad was his poor timing. Now, the Fresh Prince has reportedly been ready to return to the Floyd Law tin for some time. Now, by scheduling conflicts made him unavailable during the tight windows where James Gunn needed him to film the Suicide Squad. But before we go on to other commitments himself, there's supposed to be a film, a solo film, more focused on the return of Deadshot. This could allow the two of them to work together to explain the Master Assassin and his events during the Suicide Squad. Alright, let's keep going. The Injustice. Now, Injustice, you already know they made an animated movie about that last year. But it was really is really underperformed and it was really, really, really hated by some critics. But again, this is set where Earth where Superman became the tyrant after a Joker had arranged for him to have a bad day. This brought the death of Lois Lane and destructions of Metropolis. Again, guys, we know Injustice is a popular game as well. Now, this has proven to be one of the most enduring alternate realities of DC Multiverse. Now, the live-action adaptation of this might seem out of bounds for James Gunn. Again, he's more famous for comedy, though. But yet, James Gunn, if he explored this theme, would be a good man driven to extremes of original superhero film Super. Now, Gunn has also produced Brightburn, which is based on a twisted parody of the Superman mythologies. Okay, so while the base concepts of Injustice were becoming an animated movie, which I just mentioned, the animated movie was really, really, really bad, according to what a lot of my friends were and other folks were saying. The animated movie of Injustice was very, 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 very bad. Now, again... Decidedly dark turns, the gun has the experience as a horror movie director to explore the terrifying idea of the Superman without his limits. The comic books, again by Tom Taylor, have balanced out this element with the numbers of comedy scenes. Now, Gunn is one of the few modern directors capable of handling dark comedy and happy comedy. Now, Superhero action as equally as well. Now again, we 
would also want to see an interest in to see Margaret Robbie as the Injustice Harley Quinn. But again, let's be honest, guys. The honest effort of reformations of becoming a member of Justice League, it's still really chaotic as it is. Now, now we have another one, Hitman. So one in over 61 books over the course of five years, the story of Hitman has centered on misadventures of, to of Tommy Monaghan. Tommy Monaghan, we know the Hitman. Now, he's a Marine veteran and Gotham City natives who's become a contract killer, developed with the X-ray vision telepathy, using attacks attack by alien parasites. Written by, we know, the people, the co-creators of The Boys, we know Hitman has become famous for dark humors and twisted storylines. It is one where Tommy had to save the world from zombies. Again, released all over Gotham. Now, by killing all these uh, zombies and again beating it to the death with a spiked club, now, to add the cast of colorful support characters, including the, de the, the demonic bartender and potentially drunk superhero, Six Pack, you would have an ideal project for James Gunn to work from, after the wakes from the Suicide Squad. So again, guys. So, if you guys want me to talk about that one thing about Harley Quinn, well... I'm going to probably talk about it now since you guys were wondering. So now, what is next for Harley Quinn in the DC Extend Universe? Her future explained. Now, even though I said this video was supposed to be a short one, I'm going to finish it, finish this live stream up with this one. And then I'll just relax and let you guys just catch up with stuff then. So what is next for Harley Quinn in DC Extended Universe? Her future is explained. So the Suicide Squad leaves Harley Quinn's DC Extended Universe. Her future is wide open. We want to know where Margaret Robbie will return. Okay, you want to know? We'll tell you. So that's our jobs here at Channel Daniel Hutchins. We like to make sure we hook you guys up. So again, now the Suicide Squad is now done. So what is next for Margaret Robbie and her future as Harley Quinn? Now we want to know, fans want to know what is going to happen to Harley Quinn. Now again, she's made already three appearances already. And Harley Quinn is one of the biggest roles in Suicide Squad. And it has majority of movie focused on new characters who weren't from the first film. That carried on to the James Gunn reboot last year. Now again, Amanda Waller's Suicide Squad teams thought to have died, but again, we know she nearly falls for rising dictators before noticing some more red flags. Again, she friends to kill children, killing them and said, Again, Harley then teams up with the main Task Force X. We know Bloodsport, Peacemaker, Ratcatcher 2. Poker Dot Man, King Shark, and Rick Flag, and they have to stop the Project Starfish, which we all know is Starro. Now, related this article, every character who dies from the Suicide Squad. Now, we're not talking about that because that'd be a waste of time. Plus, you guys should probably already know who dies in Suicide Squad at this point. Now, anyway. So let's keep going. So, Margaret Robbie's debut in Harley Quinn from 2016, the David Ayer Suicide Squad, has immediately made her the fan favorite character of the series. Now, she still, still clearly somehow has a bright future after the Suicide Squad was the success of her character, Harley Quinn. Now, Harley Quinn is very, very, very popular. Now, she has her own animated series on HBO Max as well. Again, that's played by some other actress, though. But here's what we know about Harley Quinn and her future after the Suicide Squad. Harley Quinn is free after Suicide Squad. 
Well, of course we know she's free. Okay. So the Suicide Squad ending has left her open for a lot of things. Now, again, we don't know where Grizz going to be. But as she and the rest of the Suicide Squad learned about Project Starfish, we know that it was Starro. So let's not waste any time. Let's just say Project Starfish was Starro. Because that's what it was. Now, if you don't remember the the 2021 Suicide Squad, then stop watching my video and watch that right now. You've been warned. So the last time Harley Quinn was seen in Suicide Squad, she was with the Task Force X survivors, Bloodsport, Ratcatcher 2, King Shark, and others. They had to secure their freedom. There's no sign of where they're going, although it is teased that Harley and Bloodsport could stick together, as he's offered to be his friend. Without knowing their destination, they found out anything's possible for Harley Quinn. She could go anywhere, 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 anywhere with anyone. Now, given her character has free reign to appear wherever the fuck she wants, the studios or Robbie want to do with her next. Now, Margaret Robbie wants to return as Harley Quinn. We already know she does. We already know. So then, important step to determine what is next for Harley Quinn is whether or not Margaret Robbie wants to continue playing her. Well, thank God we already know she does. She does want to keep playing her because she fucking loves playing her and she's the fucking best fucking actress to ever portray her. So you'd have to be fucking crazy if you'd want someone else because Margaret Robbie is fucking the best choice of Harley Quinn. Now, she is the best Harley Quinn. Now, given that she's agreed to play Suicide Squad for the next 10 years in her life, likely more of a figure of speech or a hyperbole. But again, she doesn't have this multi-film contract going, guys. Because Robbie is significant leverage to get anyone with anything she wants while she's playing Harley Quinn. Okay, latest article, How Birds of Prey Fit the Suicide Squad Timeline. We're not talking about Birds of Prey, we're talking about someone else. So let's keep going. Harley Quinn next appearance is not confirmed. Again, it is not confirmed. We do not know when Harley Quinn is coming back. All we know is that she wants to come back. She loves to be her she loves playing Harley Quinn, but we don't know when she's coming back because it's not confirmed yet. Alright, alright, alright. I know I sound like a little I sound like a little tyrant right now. But again, we're trying to make sure you guys understand what's going on. So even with Margaret Robbie her interest in still playing Harley Quinn in the future, Warner Brothers and DC have to still decide and confirm where she is going to happen next. Now, fans have to confront and remember that knowing her for the while while she was also in Birds of Prey, respectively with the Suicide Squad, for a relative short time frame, both those films are now released. You can watch them on HBO. <sighs> right. Next Harley Quinn project is not revealed yet. Not revealed yet. There are possible ideas, though. Again, Margaret Robbie in development of a prior burst of prey. But other ideas have fizzled in well. Again, Robbie has agreed that Birds of Prey was an option. But again, there's also movies like The Joker and Harley Quinn. And Gotham City Sirens. Now they're also in consideration rumor as well. No public announcement was made yet on where Harley's going to happen next. Future D6 and Universe projects Harley could appear in. Alright guys, you want to know? I'll let you know. But since there is no confirmed appearance yet for Harley Quinn, that leaves her future up for speculation debate. Now, in terms of Harley Quinn Red Projects, it's fascinating to see where Warner Brothers and DC want to do with her next. 
There were current potential franchises, the Birds of Prey. We know she was only there for a little while. But the Birds of Prey box office takings were widely viewed as disappointments. They only earned about $201 million across the world. Now, it's mostly well received by critics, though. The general audience is, and the Suicide Squad was a huge hit with the critics, but the box office struggle due to COVID-19 pandemic, the lack of plans of franchise to continue wherever they want, the fans are difficult to imagine what is going to be her next sequel. Now, again, however, the Suicide Squad makes it pretty unlikely that she'll be part of another Task Force X. Now, we know that's crazy, though, but it's still there to remember. But there's even the chance that Margaret Robbie signs on to star in a live-action series of herself at some point. Now, we don't know when, but it's just an idea. But there's also still a chance that Harley Quinn's next DC appearance is already planned for an upcoming official announced project. Again, dependence from the plots from Peacemaker. Again, John Cena, again, is a peace-loving villain, could cross paths with Harley. Now, this fun support appearance with Robbie to have and even help set her up for an, another project. Harley Quinn has also potentially made an appearance for Batgirl, also with Leslie Grace, we know as Barbara Gordon. Now, if Harley Quinn returns to Gotham after Suicide Squad to reunite with her Birds of Prey buddies, the Cassandra Kane that runs in with the Batgirl could also be in her cards and her favors. Now, there really is no limit to where Harley Quinn's future can be, so she can show up anywhere, anytime, at any given fucking moment and anywhere. So, Robbie's love for her character can even result to a multiverse cameo maybe in the flash or completely out of left field cameo to another movie in dc universe now harley quinn dc future might not be as crystal fucking clear as you think after the suicide squad but don't worry guys fans shouldn't worry about not seeing her because she is coming back we don't know when we just know she will come back Alright, so again, like I said, I'm getting a little bit tired right now. It's already a half hour in this live stream. And I literally have my hand over my head. My earphones are flipping down over my ears. Because, you know, they're old. And again, I'll catch you guys later. See ya. Bye.